So this was the TFCon exclusive for TFCon Toronto 2021. There were two others, but they didn't arrive in time for the con. And to be honest, I was only interested in this one. However, if you are interested in the other two, Ages 3 and Up sent out an email saying that they are going to be put up on their site at some point once they get them in, so that's good at least. Lift Ticket is getting a Generation Selects figure in Legacy, which is nice, and I probably will be getting it. But this one we'll have to do for now, and it's... Well, well, let's talk. But before we do, I do have to plug the P.O. Box, because I haven't done that in a while. It's Box 301 701 Roslyn Road East, Whitby, Ontario, Canada. Forget the postal code, it'll be on the screen as per usual. Anyways, now on to the figure. Now keep in mind, this also has the repro labels slash toy hack stickers applied to it, so it looks very bland out of the box. The red on this though looks really, really cool. It's a nice deep red that really complements that bright yellow. But that's where my praise kind of ends with the robot mode. Like, that's really it. There's a lot of issues, and those issues are the alternate head paint chips so badly during transformation, forcing me to use the head that I personally don't like, the shoulder designs cause them to droop a lot, and the ratchets on one shoulder just straight up don't work. The panels behind the arms love to collapse. They do not want to stay folded up. They just needed a thoop or like a like a tab or something to stay in place, but they don't have that. The back kibble does not like to stay on, which can be super annoying. The feet are really loose. He just falls over a lot. The arms like to rotate off at the mushroom peg during transformation. The weapons cannot be mounted onto the hands because their mushroom cuts are too small for the mushroom peg. And the other weapon hates just hates staying on in general. And without the stickers, like I said, it looks bland. Like it's just standing there doing nothing. It looks fine. But once you put it into any sort of pose, or at least try to put it in any sort of pose, you start to see all of these issues that should be easy to make sure they don't happen, and yet they happen. I was really skeptical about this too because the only other x transbots figures I've owned in the past have both been bad. But I was still excited for it, and yet it's not what I hoped it to be. He comes with a lot of stuff, like a lot of stuff. And does anyone know what piece of media this Santa is from? Because I cannot figure it out for the life of me and it's bothering the hell out of me. Where is this Santa from? <laughs> but the Santa masks are probably the best part about this whole set. Well, well but, I mean, you're probably asking why the hell does he come with Santa masks? Well, this was released during the holiday season because TFCon usually takes place in July or June, whatever, is now taking place in December because of COVID. So you get Santa masks. TFCon had a lot of that. My land shark was actually wrapped like a Christmas present. So that was pretty cool. Oh, and the other issue I noticed before we move on to posing, while writing these videos, I always have the toy next to me. Well, if you look at the chest, you can see right into it. There's nothing there. He's hollow parts don't usually bother me very often, but that kind of does because it's this big empty void in his chest that they did try to cover up. But if you look from the inside, you can just see everything. That's why like tinted windshields would have looked a lot nicer than these completely clear ones. Overall, I'm not too impressed with the robot. There's a lot of issues, and as someone who owns an early x Transbots figure, I would have thought they would have improved by now, but keeping in mind that's a thought that comes from a person who hasn't bought an x Transbot figure since their first release of Breakdown, so who knows, their other figures might be really good, like that Magnus looks really sick i got to see the i wasn't able to touch it obviously but i got to see the prototype in person at tfcon and it's massive and it looks like a lot of fun i might buy it i'm not 100 percent sure but i might get it posing is not the best like i said he has articulation like a lot of it but the issues he has in the way are so annoying the loose feet the stiff as hell arms the wonky ass shoulders and before i get a ton of people in the comments telling me how to fix these issues i know how to fix them but at this point, you shouldn't have to if you're spending 175 Canadian dollars on a figure like this. <sighs> okay. The transformation I hate. It's extremely fiddly and fights with you a lot, especially tabbing the legs in and those side flaps under the arms. Ugh. Make sure when you're folding down the backpack that the two red panels underneath go inside and under the black front skirts otherwise it won't compress you have to do it's not in the instructions but you have to do that to compress it now the alt mode is actually really good it's so solid weighty and it's a really cool just it's got a really cool appearance to it those colors the wrecker stickers it's all combined just looks really nice like it just makes for a really crisp and clean alt mode 
One cool part about the alt mode is you can actually tow your other figures from chug to MP. You can adjust the wheel holders, which is really nice, to fit anything like MP Road Rage or MP Tracks. You can put Red Alert on here from Kingdom. Who cares? You can put whatever on there. It's really cool. The tires are also rubber, which makes them roll quite well if that's something you're really into. I don't roll my figures around, but that's really all the alt mode does. The mirrors are separate parts. However, don't glue them in because they do need to rotate for the transformation, but they come packed separately. He comes with these two crane attachments for alt mode. One that's super sturdy and ratcheted that looks actually really cool when mounted. And the other one that cannot hold itself up at all. It's kind of disappointing because the amount of ball joints they put in this thing, it would have been so fun to pose, yet it just refuses to stay, well, standing up straight, for instance. It just hates life. This figure is okay at best. The alt mode is really nice, but the robot mode, transformation, articulation are all really lacking and have a lot of issues. Basically, the main reason you buy a transformer gives this a lot of issues. The alt mode, which you could just go out and buy a diecast or a model kit car is amazing, but the robot and everything in between just feels like it was very, very rushed. It's enough for me to say perhaps pass on this. It's like, it's first of all, I wouldn't have this many complaints with the figure if it wasn't as expensive. It is 175 Canadian dollars. And for all its issues, that's a lot. Plus this is an exclusive, so getting it might be harder too, driving up the secondary market price. So who knows, in like a couple months, if you want this thing and it's not being sold on Ages 3 and Up or the Chosen Prime who sponsor the convention, it'll be more than 175 Canadian. And it's at that point, totally not worth it. Ultimately, I would say pass on it, unless you really want an MP scaled lift ticket. But yeah, I'd, I'd honestly say skip it. I should not have passed on the Ocular Max version that was at TFCon, I kind of wish I'd bought it to make a comparison, but that's something that I think looks a lot better. So I might try that one, who knows? But anyways, that's been my look at the TFCon exclusive lift ticket from x Bots, whose name I actually forget, but it's just lift ticket, who cares? Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I will see you next time, goodbye. <laughs>